So let's take a look at IGN's review. For starters, they gave Velgard a 9 out of 10. That is very, very high praise to receive a score like that for anything. Personally, I don't do scoring for my own review type stuff, mainly because I cannot tell you the difference between an 8.5 and a 9. But when I see a score really high like that from an outlet, that tells me that the game has to be pretty close to perfect. The reviewer points out that they are impressed with how the Bioware that made Anthem was able to make this new Dragon Age game. The level design reminded the reviewer of Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. The combat is fully committed to a more action style with some more tactical options. Team members are more of an extension of the player character than being their own entities. From a writing standpoint, the reviewer highlights that the whole squad is made up of complex, memorable, likable, and distinct personalities. Additionally, it is mentioned that they really like the incorporation of a non-binary character. The reviewer found this to be an authentic representation, along with navigating a family's reaction to this. IGN said that this character and those non-binary story points were well handled and did not feel like an after-school special and did not feature any pandering. Both the reviewer and even the writer of this character are non-binary. And another thing I want to throw in there for some more context. Part of the reviewing agreement with Bioware and EA with all of these early reviews is that they could not explicitly talk about the name of who this character was. In this case, it's Tosh and their gender storyline. So it would appear that both Bioware and EA wanted to hide Tosh because they felt like they would receive backlash. And based on some of the story points and lines shown around this character at the time, they were right about that because of how bad and forced the story and writing is surrounding this character. To continue with the IGN review, they do mention that the game does feel disconnected from the prior games, and that many of the prior choices, if any, really come up in this new title. IGN even cites the finale as being something like Mass Effect 2's final mission. Within their verdict, they even say that the new Mass Effect will have a tough act to follow because of the quality presented with this new Dragon Age title. So on the surface level, there is a lot to praise here. Across the board, and any problems that the reviewer found, they found those to be minor. So I wanted to lay out a summary of what the reviewer thought of the game, so that then we can look at another article from IGN related to this too. So for reference, the review came out close to the game's launch, with this new article coming out just a few days ago. The title of the article is Dragon Age the Velgard is at War with Itself. This new article even talks about how the game is at odds with itself, being that it is a sequel to a 10-year-old game, and then presents something that doesn't really have many ties to what came before, despite Velgard being a sequel itself. It even discusses how Velgard is kind of messy and how it fits in, basically because of how it is a sequel but also acts more like a full-on reboot than a full-fledged sequel. For a title of Velgard, no one in the game actually brings this up, but Dreadwolf is talked about a lot, which used to be the original name of the game. The build-up of the prior games with Sola sees him tossed aside for new bad guys, honestly furthering that this game had a bunch of rewrites throughout its development. There seems to be a lack of choice overall, and the big ones in the prior games are not reflected well within this new game. The article even brings up a conversation that they had with the game director, saying that Velgard is more of a clean slate. Established tones from other games are not seen in this new title. IGN even thinks going a more separate route with a completely new cast, like with Mass Effect Andromeda, might have worked a lot better. Because from my perspective, it would seem that Velgard is stuck between this weird position of being a sequel, but then also trying to be its own thing. IGN then brings up the lack of dialogue choices, and how party members cannot be talked to at length. One of the best characters, Varric, is then sidelined, which I would agree very much with. The article ends with the writer saying that this game is not the golden era of Bioware that we were hoping for. I would even say that some of my audience would even agree with many of these points in this article, but it is at odds with that initial review from the same website. So now that both the review and the article are presented and discussed, I do find this a bit humorous that we essentially see two very different opinions presented at the same big website. Now sure, IGN has many different writers. Not the same writer is doing every review or writing all of their articles. But when reviews or articles are presented by IGN, on its face, we just see IGN. So it's very odd to have them have a glowing review of a 9 out of 10 and then make an article a week later that would appear like it would be more of a fit for that game to be a 7 or maybe even a 
a 6 out of 10, based on the website's history. We also need to consider that the initial review was in stark contrast, based on how fans were receiving the new game. It did not have very large player counts, based on the information found on Steam, and it only peaked around 90,000 players at launch. Whereas something like, say, Baldur's Gate 3 when it launched, it peaked around 900,000 players. Then throw in a lot of the vocal fans and players sharing their opinions and issues, with characters, story elements, and just the writing being plain bad. Oddly enough, this new article by IGN feels a bit more in line with how fans were actually feeling. Being that this is the big games media, I can't help but think this new article feels like a way for IGN to soften their 9 out of 10 to their readers in the gaming community. Put out an article like this a week after the launch of the title to help gain back favor with those gamers and potential readers. But it is hard to take IGN seriously on these types of topics because of the contrast between themselves. I would argue that making a written review and then another written article that both seem to be at odds with each other. This was not the format to then present this in. I do want to clarify that I think big outlets should let different opinions on maybe the same game be voiced and heard. It potentially can make the organization more well-rounded. The vehicle in which this is done is important, and I don't think the way it was done here was the best way. I think a better format would have been to have a spoiler game discussion to be done with a panel of IGN people who played the game and had varying opinions on it. This would allow for larger discussions on areas of the game, and then within this format, it would really lend themselves to those types of things. Because by having a glowing initial review, and then an article come out a week later that goes against what that review stated, it makes it feel like IGN is trying to shift their opinion to save face with their potential readers and audience. It's like the initial review came out. They saw how much of the media is not very much in line with the community on this one, and then they want to try and shift that perception, so then they are not hurt for future games and opinions that they give out. You can also throw out that maybe IGN just doesn't really know what is going on, because they were also the ones that hated Alien Isolation and enjoyed Velgard, which pandered to them. Here, vegetables. Thank you. So, I'm non-binary. What does that mean? It means I don't feel like a man or a woman. If you are neither a man nor a woman, then what are you? Non-binary. I just said, and I'm going to use they instead of she from now on. If this is because I have criticized your dress or your manners... It isn't! Under the Cune, the term for one whose gender does not match the one given to them at birth was a Cunethlock. Perhaps you are like that. Why do you have to keep picking at it? Why can't you just be happy for me? Evitosh, Chakra Toebra. So I'm supposed to struggle with who I am? Even if I don't feel like I fit? Even if I feel wrong? No. You misunderstood. Then say it better! Why am I never enough for you? I will go. Thank you for inviting me to your home, Panahedan. As an add-on of sorts to this, I want to circle back to the review itself. The reviewer said that the writing and situations revolving the non-binary stuff was not an after-school-like special or pandering. Well, that is exactly what that dinner scene felt like. I showed it again here because it's still relevant, and fully presents that even with the initial review. If IGN does not think that sequence is pandering, then I have no idea what IGN defines as pandering. Stuff like this was being shared and honestly continues to be shared, all over social media, along with the element of other bad writing in the game. I have spoken about this stuff before. Old Bioware knew how to navigate this type of stuff in interesting ways, but the use of modern language, ignoring and tossing aside in-universe terms for this type of stuff, along with the very poor delivery, is what makes it all seem like satire. But this was all actually played as a serious scene, making all of these parts come across as unintentional self-parody. I found the entire situation with IGN to be a rather interesting one, and where we see media and big game developers sort of trying to push the same non sense onto the player. I found this situation to be funny as well. Like I said, I think big outlets would benefit from having differing opinions presented, but the manner in which they do that is very important, especially if they are trying to improve public perception. What do you think of IGN's review and their follow-up article? Where do you stand on it? Does Velgard have 9 out of 10 writing? 
let me know in the comments down below. If you're interested in supporting the channel, please check out my Patreon page. For just a dollar a month, you can help to keep this channel going strong, and this allows me to be able to do more for my awesome audience. Please check out the links in the description and pinned comment for ways to support the channel. And most of all, thank you very much for watching.